I was really drawn uh, into the images of beauty products. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in beauty anyway, and the illustrations, and um, the way that products would be marketed at women. And some of them were so convincing, you know, I'd be looking through adverts thinking, I wonder if you can still get hold of this. This looks really good. You know, it's, it promises all these things. And I was interested in the Chicago companies and in Valmore in particular, and how um, Valmore products were targeted, as, you know, especially at black women, door to door, mm -hmm. and that they used this beautiful illustration and that they used the, um, they used a kind of Southern mystery and um, a Southern knowledge of lucky charms and symbols to kind of say, you can put a spell on the person that you love by how you do your hair and what you spray on yourself and the cream they put in on yourself, that the power that women had to affect their destinies was in uh, attracting, mm -hmm. attracting the male gaze. Mm -hmm. And that has this extra layer for black women because it's, it's uh, aligning yourself with a particular uh, female beauty, which is a white-centered female beauty. So, I mean, this lucky brown tint is really something that I'm pulled to. These are the famous famous products company that's from Chicago. I liked that this is really old and it hasn't gone far. It hasn't gone far. Right? It's still in Chicago. Presses your hair in place. We can see this, you know, duality. And I, the products that I use when I was young on my hair would still have this kind of illustration on them, like Dax pomade. So on the one hand, we have this woman who's straightening her hair with a straightening iron and her hair is black and glossy and long and loose. And then on the other side, we're meant to reject this and say that we, we don't like it, but she has this really curly, you know, nappy hair. This looks like my hair, but, but this, you know, the, the product is showing you before and after. So you're meant to be pulled towards this. And she is black, but she has the lightest kind of black skin. So that so, um, famous products and Valmore had this, you know, the special cream that you can sleep in that's going to take your skin lighter. And there was emphasis on lighter and brighter and longer and straighter that that was a way to get to femininity. And so I was just drawn to this idea of femininity as a performance that a, a natural born black woman just wake up in the morning that that wasn't female enough and then from your getting out of bed you have to kind of spray on a female s smell and and put, mush, uh, move your body around in such a way that it was a female shape and then put and put on the female clothes and and the you know bring your coloring so it was more feminine you know to be lighter and to encourage longer hair there were many wigs that were advertised by um, Valmore and famous and, and some of them have been used in popular culture before like there's a famous Rolling Stones cover where it's using all these different wigs and I mean the Rolling Stones have uh, their own in entangled history with uh, black stuff mm -hmm. black, women black women and black stuff so but I, I think I'd seen these adverts around and I was in a, a Marc Jacobs uh, bookstore and it had you know loads of these Valmore adverts because they're really attractive mm -hmm. and they're by this artist I wonder if you can find out who the artist is T Taylor while I'm on the artist who makes the um the Valmore because he, he's an African-American artist do you know his name I can't I yeah I know exactly the aesthetic and I yeah. cannot think of but he was a really important kind of commercial art yes. artist yeah. yeah he's a really important and influential black artist who goes on to do um, work at the World's Fair yeah. and um so so there's a blackness that we're seeing here that's different to many of the other images in Ed Williams mm -hmm. you know you, you might not as a black woman want to look or be thought of as looking like this mm -hmm. like which is him. so sort of yeah this this a mammy image and mm -hmm. this aunt jemima image and everything's shiny and and mm -hmm. and there's not enough details and the, the face is like a mask but here it this it's really beautiful so i i felt in the song that the song was first of all about the intoxicating presentation of this new negro blackness which was 
fine and grand and soft, but it it relied a lot on a white beauty standard and how black women to a certain extent felt the need to present themselves in this way. Perhaps if you are going higher up in the in the professions, you there would be a certain way that you would have your hair and have your makeup and have your posture and have your clothes that was closer to this this idealised feminine beauty which had its roots in whiteness. And I liked I wanted to make the strings kind of intoxicating, but we also did this thing where we, we put these warps in the string so you uh, like when they when they have the old movies that have been they've gone from tape mm -hmm. onto digital where the the canisters of tape have obviously been sat around too long so you hear these sonic disruptions and i wanted to have a bit of that where we're talking about uh, it's like a siren call into mm -hmm. this kind of into this into this feminine beauty, which we know from history sometimes required some medication to get yourself exactly in this perfectly chilled balance as a woman where you weren't meant to be wondering what's happening with your husband at work and you're not meant to be too pulled too much into your children's lives or into the domestic so that you could kind of float and put the ribbon in your hair and be ready when your husband came home from work. And, and then halfway through the song, there is this disruption and this fracture or the person that's saying, uh, I don't want to leave myself behind, vanishing into a girl that I don't recognise. Mm -hmm. And there were, Sweet Georgia Brown was one, another one of the, the labels on the tins, and Sweet Georgia Brown is, you know, she's brown and voluptuous, but she has this light brown skin, which black women are, were meant to aspire to. Mm -hmm. And saying, you know, if you want to go to Sweet Georgia Brown, do. But I'll be smouldering in my plum red lipstick, my black skin shining, my black hair kinking. And I, and I just sort of repeat that and repeat. I wasn't going to do it as many times. But I just was in this kind of mantra. And then when I heard it back, I said, like, no, this is right. Sort of, that's as many times as you need to counter the narrative that's saying your skin is too dark, your hair is not straight enough or long enough, and your, your features are wrong, your body shape is wrong. I mean, they're not historic issues that they're, they're around that I, I especially think that you know the politics around black women in particular and black, around black women's hair are still so alive and active and and fizzing and they are class-based and they are based around privilege there's all it, it, there's a lot in um, in black hair still but I thought in this in this song, the person was deciding to peel off this mask, or deciding to not to not put it on, to not be to not be part of it, to reject it, to be in um, to be in one's own beauty, mm -hmm. which I thought was an, an important thing to do. I remember growing up and seeing sort of Naomi Campbell and looking at her and looking at her long straight hair and thinking. Well, she's she's black like me, but maybe she's black and Asian, or maybe she's black and something. Like, I couldn't work out how she had this extremely long, sort of straight hair. And I remember seeing a lot of, you know, straight hair around. And um, it's a, you know, I have young children. It's still a, it's still a thing. Mm 